let's go on and move into the interval studies. These are very potent exercises. They come with warnings and instructions. Please follow all instructions very carefully to avoid injury. If you force these exercises, you will get hurt. So be very mindful to follow all instruction. Okay. Okay? Perfectly clear. All righty. We're going to start with seconds, and we're going to start them on middle C. There's many variations as to where you can start them. You could start them on a middle G if you want to get into the upper register sooner. But middle C seems like a good place to start. In fact, that's where Carmine started me when I was a young girl. So let's go ahead and start on middle C. I'd like you to play a note. Just get middle C in your face. Excellent. We're gonna have you just use the breath attack. There's no tonguing involved at all. Most importantly is the timing. Subdivision will refine the movement from note to note. The more refined the action is, the easier it is for your body to move. And the easier it is for your body to move, the more you can just play music and not worry about your body's movement. These exercises train your body to move in a reflexive manner. The more you practice them as prescribed, the easier the movement will be. Therefore, you're free to play music from your heart. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started with the intervals. I'm going to ask you when you get fatigued to finish out the interval you're in the middle of. Don't stop it in the middle. Okay. Otherwise, your high range won't grow. But then I want you to take a 10 second break. Let the blood come back to your face, take the mouthpiece off, and pick it up where you left off for what we'll call the second set. Alrighty? Sounds good. Do not play with pain. You can push it a little bit, but no pain. Understood. Promise? I promise. Alrighty. One and two and three and four, we end up. <laughs> in place, blow is constant and steady. Ride the air as much as possible. the fourth beat especially. So you're ready, set to play before the note comes out. Keeping good time. Charlie's getting a little fatigued. You can probably take it one more without harm. Do you want to rest now or do you want to keep going? Good time to rest? Yeah. Very wise. So you're not pushing it too hard too soon. But I assure you, with this 10 second rest and blood coming back to your lips, you'll have a good fresh second set. Four beats before you start, pick it up with the note you left off. All right. One and two and three and four, we end up.
can go higher. This is a good place to stop. I know you could squeeze out a few more, but as I said earlier, I don't want you playing in pain and I don't want you encouraging any sort of forcing or injury. So this is a very prudent place to stop. Now always follow the interval study with a pedal F sharp. I'd like you to play it as soft as you can and hold it for as long as possible three times. So this is like a massage, an antidote to what you just did. Give yourself time before you start. more just for good measure. Excellent. And follow this with the chromatic scale from middle C to high C down to low C two times, keeping good time. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. When you do these intervals, I want you to change them up. So for one week, if you're just starting them, you'll do seconds, in, your, in this case from middle C, mm -hmm. although you do have the option for middle G or low G or low C, depending on what you're working on. What kind of situation would I use the, high, the higher uh, variations versus the lower ones? Well, the higher variation would be good, again, if you want to get to the upper register sooner. This way you bypass any register breaks. So you just, if you're building a high register and, you're, and you need to really jump start it, you would start higher. Middle C is a nice moderate place to start. If you want to work through more breaks, start on low G. If you want to work on excerpts such as Heldenleben where you're starting with a low set or Rheingold, you would start these interval practices on low C. I did them from low C for many, many, many years. It's just fun. Also, you can increase the interval every week, and at some point, you might get as big as tenths, which is great work if you're playing Mahler. So you can, or if you have octaves, if you're working on the B minor mass or Adagio and Allegro, you can custom make what intervals you work on that week, assuming you've gone through them sequentially. So you want to, at first, start either on middle G or middle C and work your way through each interval every week until you get to tenths. You can even, when you get to the larger intervals, move up in half steps. So if, it's, if you're doing octaves, you could go C to C, and then the next one could be C sharp to C sharp. So you're covering a lot of territory.
Make sense? It makes sense. And it always is followed with the pedal tones and the chromatic scale. These are the essential parts of balancing out the strenuousness of building an upper register with the interval studies. And sadly, this seems to be information missing in the one Caruso book that is actually out there, the calisthenics for brass. I don't know why it was left out, but it's an essential part of practicing the interval studies is to do the recovery of the pedal tones and the chromatic scale. So there are always three parts. Always three parts. Comprendo? I understand. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thanks, Julie.